this lesson, we're going to be creating an interactive web page where we've got two buttons. The first one is the click me. That's going to make the request to the JSON data and retrieve back the contents and output them on the page. And this time we are going to be building out as we iterate through the elements on the page, we'll be building out within the output element some structure to the content as we're outputting it. And then we're also going to be selecting the raw JSON file as string using the JSON stringify method in order to convert it to a string and having that output within the HTML as well. I've selected the HTML file, added in an element for a button, and then also an output area. So when we click the button, we're going to make the fetch request to the JSON file, retrieve back the data within the JSON file, and update the contents of the output element. We're going to be looping through the set of data. So let's add in the event listeners. We'll add in the onClick event for the button. So this can just be an anonymous function. Whenever the button is clicked, then we'll make the request to get the data. And I'll create a function that will get the data. We can also have the fetch request within there as well, within the get data function. And what this will do is, as we loop through, we'll return back the value of the contents of the data and output it within the output section. So we need to get the data. So that means that we need to fetch. And let's uh, select the URL. And this is the same JSON, 6 JSON file that we had, that we were using previously. So make a fetch request to the URL. And within the URL, once we make the request, we'll wait for the response back. And once the response is received, the response object is going to be returned back as JSON. And then once we have the response object, we have it as data, and this is going to be in a usable data format, so then we can loop through it. So for now, just to make sure that everything is okay, we've got the data properly, we'll output it into the console of data. So this gives us an array of friends, and it's actually the friends array that we want to loop through. So we don't want to get the entire data object, we just want to loop through a particular part of it where we've got the array, which is going to give us a bunch of items that we can list out on the page as we iterate through them. So that returns back four items within the friends array. So let's create a way to set the data and select the data. And that's going to be contained within a function and output data. And we'll request a data object so just set it up as a variable called val, and within the console, we'll log out val. And so now let's update this. Once we complete the promise and we've got the data, we'll send it to out data, which is going to output the content on the data. And right now it's just retrieving back the array. So selecting the array, and then we can loop through each one of the items of the array and do something with those items. I'm also going to pick up within the for each loop using the index value. So that way we can output content into the page. Let's create a variable called HTML. And I'll just set this up as a blank value. So just a blank string value. And also for the output, as we click the data output and update the inner HTML, and this will say connecting. And this is actually going to be very brief because once we get the data, then we're going to update the inner HTML with the new data. So once we've got the data, we're, we need to clear out the inner HTML. So we can just do that by setting it as blank. And now we're ready to start looping through and constructing the HTML content that we want to eventually assign to output. So we can move the output area over here and just assign that newly constructed HTML object to the output. So we don't see anything yet because we're clearing out the contents of the HTML. We haven't added any content into it. We're going to construct the HTML object using the template literals, and this is going to be created as a string. And we'll create the items from the object as divs. And let's uh, output into the console as we're constructing it. So usually I do find that this is helpful as we can see the object information and this allows us to open it up within the console and I can see that the property names. So if I want to get the property name of first, last, or ID, I can output those really easily. So that's now contained within the element object. Select the first name and I'll just apply a space there 
add in the last name. In addition, we can also set the ID. So I'm going to wrap that within the rounded brackets, and this is where we can have the ID. Also going to go ahead and then add in to the index plus one, and I'll do a dot and space. So now we'll see what this looks like. So this outputs all of the values, and this is data that's coming from the JSON file, and we're just simply outputting it into the page. If we want to see all of the contents of the JSON file just being output as raw data, we can also add to this. And just before we update and add the HTML, we can use the JSON stringify method in order to stringify the value of the contents. And what I'll do is I'll wrap this with the JavaScript function and uh, quotes, and then have this as a tag of small, as this is gonna be all of the compressed data being output. So there we've got all of the content. And notice when we do have it as a string format, so that's just coming back as a raw string data. So there's no spacing or anything within the data. And it is hard to read it when there is no spacing and there's no new lines with the data. Uh, so that's why when I do use it and when I do output it into the console, as I'm constructing it, it's a lot easier if it's an object within the console and I can see the breakdown of the different property names. And if you have to navigate through to the object or the array items, you can a lot easier do that within the console than you can if you just get the raw data. So now we've got the content coming from an external file being added to our web page uh, whenever the event is triggered, whenever the button is clicked. Let's add another button. And what this button will do is this will just clear the current contents. So just do a clear. And I'll give this one a class of button one. And within the code, select the button one. I'll add a click event to button one. And this button will be just clearing out the contents of the output of the inner HTML. Click me brings in the content and clear clears out the content. So we've got the two buttons that are providing the interactions for the web page content. So go ahead and try it out to get more familiar with getting data and then also looping through the data in order to output it on your page. And you're going to be ready to move on to the next lesson.